what's going on you guys welcome back preppers economic prepper here hope that you guys are doing very well today i'm certainly feeling a whole lot better uh just want to thank you guys right off the bat if you're new to the channel please consider uh subscribing to the channel and also drop a like for the video i totally appreciate that but uh for those of you who have been following me for uh at least the last couple of videos you guys know my situation i just want to thank you guys so much for your remedies thank you guys so much for your tips thank you guys so much for your concerns i'm already feeling 90 95 percent better already so thank you guys so much for that but guys you know we've seen gas prices you know as high as we've ever seen them grocery store prices continuously going higher creating uh empty shelf situations uh you know and it seems like every crisis that we've seen uh it's almost like these hundred year crises uh, we're seeing them more frequently and that is very concerning whether it's a natural disaster or a uh, man-made disaster a man-made crisis we're seeing all of it and we're, we're getting it more and more and we're talking about prepping and solutions how to combat this plan that they're overall attempting to execute which will ultimately affect every American not even every American, every human on this planet. So the question is, you know, well, what do we do, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure that you guys are familiar with the Yellowstone flooding. Uh, the Yellowstone flooding is one of the more recent disasters or crises that we uh, have encountered. It says here that the Yellowstone flooding rebuild could take years and cost billions of dollars. Uh, created in 1872, the United States was recovering from the Civil War. Yellowstone was the first of the national parks to that that came to be referred to as America's best idea. Flood waters this week outnumbered bridges, washed out miles of roads, and closed the park as it approached peak tourist season during the during its 150th anniversary celebration. Now, this is certainly sad just because when you think about it, okay, some parts of our country here uh, are experiencing flooding while a larger part of our country is experiencing droughts and both are crises both is a crisis um, and I just wish that there was a very very easy way to kind of uh, reallocate the resources where there are too many in this case caused by flooding and uh, relocate those resources to where there's not enough obviously in the Midwest uh, southern west I should say uh, where there's a lot of drought going on there and of course that's gonna create a new crisis where you know whereby farmers are not able to appropriately irrigate their farms and the crops and that's gonna create additional uh, low food supply going forward potentially empty shelf situations on it goes on and on and on now and it won't matter whether or not you shop at Walmart Kroger all these Costco Sam's Club but speaking of Sam's Club, my wife was just in Sam's Club today and she let me know that there is an amazing deal going on right now with uh, Sam's Club having slashed their memberships down to $8 for a very limited time. Um, she said, let's see, okay, here it is here. I actually looked it up because I wanted to give you guys some accurate information. Uh, here it is. It says here that the Sam's Club annual membership has been reduced to $8 for a limited time according to a statement released by the company. The discounted membership will be available at Sam's Clubs nationwide starting Friday. So that's what yesterday. Yeah, today's Saturday. So yesterday, um, the reduced price memberships are limited to one person, won't be available past Sunday, June 26th, and are, redeem and are redeemable at in-person in locations. Now, just to give you guys perspective, so you guys, you have some time. Today's the 18th, so you have until the 26th to be able to take advantage of the Sam's Club discounted membership price. And I had talked to you guys and asked you guys in the comments before, is it worth having multiple memberships? You know, if you got, if you have Sam's Club, do you need Costco? If you got Costco, do you need BJ's? If you have BJ's, do you need Sam's Club, right? So anyway, at eight bucks for a membership, it's, that's a no-brainer. So if, if you don't have one, I'd strongly consider getting one. It says here that a normal membership cost uh, for the Sam's Club membership is $45, at least according to the Sam's Club website. So I uh, hope you guys can take advantage of that. Um, now, let us let me ask you something. I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the years, 
and a lot of people who have way more prepping experience than I do uh, tend to rely on flip phones and older phone technology. Uh, uh, that's pretty much just what I've seen. Now you guys comment down below if, if that's something that you subscribe to. Do you prefer to use a like an old school phone, non-smartphone, or what's your, what's your preference? I love to hear from you guys. Now, I know a lot of people who have, um, they had an old iPhone and I forget what happened with the 3G technology, but many of them started having issues recently. And you guys can help fill that in. Uh, but anyways, ultimately the, 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 the point here is that cellular phone technology is evolving, right? There was this big push for 5G not too long ago. Uh, a lot of you guys remember that. Uh, a lot of concerns were brought up regarding what the 5G technology unintended consequences or depending upon you know who you are, the intended consequences, if you know what I mean, uh, could be as a result of the 5G technology being implemented and uh, the rays and the waves emitted from it and what it could cause and what it could do outside of providing us with a higher and faster data transfer speed, right? Well, 6G technology is already being discussed. And uh, according to Nokia CEO, it says that 6G technology will be here by 2030, but you might not access it via your smartphone. So I thought that was a little interesting. Uh, Nokia builds telecom networks that enables devices to communicate with one another. And it's funny, it's funny how Nokia is kind of like, one of the front runners on this 6G technology because back in the day, I don't know how, how many of you guys remember that movie, uh, Charlie's Angels. Uh, what was the blonde girl's name in the movie? Uh, geez. Uh, anyway, uh, pretty small. I forget her name. But anyway, all of those girls in that movie had Nokia phones. And those was like one of my favorite movies back in the day. And no, at the time, Nokia as a cellular phone provider they were they were they were running it they were literally at the top of the game and today it's like Nokia who right so uh, I just think it's interesting that Nokia now is at the forefront or among the forefront of cellular manufacturers cellular companies uh, getting ahead of this uh, 6g game right um, today the more prominent cellular phone manufacturers are Samsung and iPhone. Let's just be honest, right? So really interesting. But what's even more interesting is where they're going with this. Nokia CEO Pekka Lundmark expects 6G mobile networks to be in operation by the end of the decade, but he doesn't think that smartphones will be the most common interface by then. So the question would be, if you don't think that smartphones are going to be the most common interface using this new 6G cellular technology uh, network, well, what would be more common than a smartphone? Because today, the most common device hitting the 5G networks is going to be a smartphone. Speaking on a panel at the World Economic Forum in Davos Tuesday, Lundmark said that he expects 6G to hit the, com the commercial market around 2030, which coincides roughly with when Huawei, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, that name properly, uh, expects to see the technology on the market. Headquartered in Finland, Nokia builds telecom networks and enables smartphones, blah, blah, blah. Right. But here's the most interesting part here. He says by then, definitely the smartphone as we know it today will not anymore be the most common interface. He went on to say, many of these things will be built directly into our bodies. Now, Anybody who's still holding on to a flip phone, maybe one of the earlier iPhones, definitely will not be one of the, let's just say, shall we say, earlier, early adopters of this new uh, embedded into our body technology, whatever they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to do like a, uh, I don't know if they're going to do some kind of a microchip and then, now, now, 
I guess let me finish that thought, right? So I don't know if they're going to do some kind of a microchip, nanochip, something like that. At that point, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a nanochip. You don't want, I mean, can you imagine, first of all, I'm already not at all interested in that, right? But can you imagine having some big device or some big chip bulging out of your skin that'd be kind of weird but I guess nothing's weird if everyone's doing it and that's the problem is that too many people just do what other people do because everyone else is doing it and that is the problem it's like it's playing into their bigger plan right so you know they create a problem and I'm not saying that they are creating all problems but a lot of the problems that we face today they're they're creating these problems and then they're creating these solutions, right? And, you know, we live in a democracy, right? <clears throat> Thankfully, we live in a democracy, but that's even questionable in and of itself. It's like, you know, uh, no one wants to live in a communistic society, but the way our society works, if you're paying attention, a lot of people don't realize this, is that the problems that are being created are manufactured, right? And because we live in a democracy, <clears throat> the solutions that are made available to us allow us to choose in many cases allow us to choose to go in the direction that they want you to go right so they're not telling you you have to do this but if you're having a problem just so happen that maybe they created it right if you're having a problem but the solution is getting them to get you to do what they want you to do we didn't, they can, they can honestly say, hey, we didn't force you to do anything. You chose to do this. Case in point, you go and sign up for a Sam's Club membership. And I haven't been to Sam's Club recently, so I don't know this personally. But what I've been told is that if you go to Sam's Club, for example, you don't get a physical card anymore, right? So how do you get a Sam's Club membership? Oh, well, we give you a, you know, we put it on your smartphone. So you got to download the app. So... If you're, if, and whether it's Sam's Club or any other company, right? But many companies are going this route, but, but, but bear with me for a second, right? So you no longer have a choice for a card, assuming that this is correct. This is, this is coming from multiple sources. So I'm assuming it's correct, right? I haven't been to Sam's Club uh, in several days, nor have I needed to get a new Sam's Club membership any, you know, recently. We've had the Sam's Club memberships for years. So I don't know. And, and, and again, this is only applying to new memberships. So I, since I've already had a membership, there's no reason for me to go get a new one. But I'm being told that if you are applying for a new membership and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm no expert. I'm just sharing some anecdotal information that I received. and You guys are going to let me know if I'm off base. So you go get a new membership. They're not going to give you a physical card they're going to give you the option to download their app and you install the app on your phone and then you can log in with your newly created account. That's how memberships are working now for brand new accounts. If you have an old uh, account and you had a physical card, you're grandfathered in. Now, if you lose that card, I don't know if they're going to say, hey, hey, we'll send you a new one or they're going to say, hey, we don't send out new cards anymore. You have to download the app and use the, you know, membership that way now what this does is it tells a new person a new member essentially hey you don't have to download the app but if you want a membership you're gonna have to get the app because that's what we do nowadays right so it's like they're not forcing you to do anything but if you want to if you want to do what you want to do which is shop with us you're gonna have to download our app now this is a small scale case of it, but but you see how this could be implemented in a number of different scenarios where problems and issues are manufactured. Or let me rephrase this: We want you guys to we want to we want to corral the cattle into a specific place. We want these cattle to do a certain thing, right? But we can't tell the cattle what to do. We have to let the cattle make their own decisions. So what we can do is we can create a problem that the cattle have to deal with, but we'll also create a solution that, but the solution is right where we want the cattle to be. So we create a problem for cattle. We wanted the cat, we wanted the cattle to be right here, right? Cattle are currently over here. We create a problem in this area where they are solutions over here. Now all the cattle come to us. 
we didn't force them to do anything. And so this is basically what this is the this is a very simplistic explanation or attempt to illustrate what's happening in our society and a lot of people just aren't questioning it, right? So the big question is, well, well where 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 are we headed with this, right? Now, if you've been watching the stock market, I watch the stock market every single day. Not a day goes by where I don't keep in <coughs> excuse me, keep tabs on the stock market. Dow Jones right now is sitting at 29,000, which is just below 30,000, which is a very critical psychological point for the Dow to be at this point at this time. S&P 500 currently is sitting at 3674. NASDAQ is at 10,798. Now, what's really interesting and what's really just mind-blowing is to see how Bitcoin just precipitated from $60,000, I forget exactly how much it was at the top or the at the high of the last within the last 8 months, but Bitcoin was at nearly 18 no $60,000 a coin per bitcoin so crypto crypto has definitely shown its uh typical personality on steroids of being volatile as all heck and currently bitcoin has dropped below $17,800 as a sell off accelerates uh and, and this is this is just this is an unprecedented movement in and of itself even for bitcoin Bitcoin is volatile, but I've never seen it plunge so far so fast. At the same time, Bitcoin has never been so high either. Bitcoin had only hit $60,000 for the first time in the last 12 months. So there's that. It says here that Bitcoin plunged to $17,749 and it fell to $849 on Saturday. Excuse me. And Ether fell to $897 on Saturday afternoon. So... Now, here's here's <laughs> I, I I'm I'm debating upon talking about this right now or saving this for another video. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this right quick. I'm gonna say this. Billionaire investor. Let me just pull it up for you guys because I, I want to talk to you guys about uh just a, uh, I just want to give you guys a little bit of hint toward what I'm gonna talk about in my next video or, or maybe not my exact next video but on a future video. So let's just talk about Bitcoin. Michael Saylor, okay? Now, if you guys are not familiar with Michael Saylor, uh, you're probably gonna hear more and more about him, okay? So, Michael Saylor is a, I believe he's a billionaire himself. Um, I forget if Michael Saylor is a billionaire himself. Here it is. Quote, on a multi-billion dollar balance sheet, we only got a, 200 million dollar loan that we have to collateralize and we are 10x over over collateralized on it right now <coughs> excuse me that's an interesting one i'm gonna have to break that down for you guys i don't have the time to, to go into that much uh detail on this one today but micro strategy co-founder and ceo michael saylor <coughs> has put out numerous countless videos basically explaining what is Bitcoin? Why is it the optimal investment? Now, I'm not saying I agree with this. None of this channel, none of this video is investment advice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. I had a cough. So none of this is, is an investment advice. But Michael Saylor has put it put out numerous videos explaining Bitcoin, why it's the why he believes it is the superior investment, why it's better than gold, why he feels that it's better than real estate, why he feels that it's better than uh, just about any tr cash, while you know why it's the superior investment, and while he purchased, don't quote me on this one, somewhere around a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now, if Bitcoin has gone from sixty thousand to seventeen thousand dollars, you can just do the math and just imagine how much money has been lost. Collectively, trillions of dollars has been lost. Um, between crypto and the stock market crash. Well, I'm going to leave you with this, right? Something big is looming. And according to Rising S. Bunkers CEO, or at least one of the leaders of this company, Gary Lynch, he said that business is booming. Now, they make bunkers. 
they're saying that they have received a 2,000% increase from possible buyers on bunkers. Now, I'm just going to leave you guys with that. There's been a 2,000% increase in inquiries regarding bunkers. Okay, now these bunkers that this company sells, they're not cheap. This is literally like wealthy status. So if you're wealthy and you're looking for a bunker, chances are you're looking to this guy. If you're like me and like the, the average guy out here, uh, we're probably not messing with their price point <laughs> of bunkers uh, and, or, and or we're just inquiring out of curiosity. Well, why would billionaires and near billionaires, you know, you know, nine figure wealth individuals uh, be interested in purchasing a bunker? And why would there be such a spike in demand in these bunkers? You just got to wonder, right? You got to wonder, like, what do they know that we don't know? What is coming down the pipeline? So I'm just going to leave you guys with that. Something is definitely coming down the pipeline. Uh, I'm going to dig more into that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to share some information with you guys that I thought was interesting. If you found value in the video, definitely drop a like for the video. I'm going to go ahead and get some more green drink uh, and continue to try to boost my energy and boost my recovery. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the well wishes. Um, and, and let's keep the lines of communication open. Uh, share your thoughts. Share this video. And, and let me know what you guys think about what we discussed today. Um, I love to read your comments. I love to read your very insightful comments. You guys are very, very smart, and I learn a lot from you guys. So I just want to thank you. Um, Economic Prepper here. I'll see you guys on the next one.